Hi everyone. It's our daily weather discussion. It's become Meteor daily now. It has become daily. I'm meteorologist Jacob Wyckoff, joined by our executive weather producer, Terry Ellison. I uh, want to mention off the top, we're going to be streaming on YouTube like we did the last couple of days, but also now on Facebook Live. So as they've entered that functionality where you can chime in and ask questions, we want to hear from you exactly what you want to hear. We'll try to answer as many questions as we can along the way. But uh, Terry, we're now basically in the midst of this system. Yeah, so uh, it has arrived, um, and as we expected, we said this yesterday, a slower start than we thought maybe 24, 48 hours ago. So this morning, obviously, it was fairly dry, fairly quiet, and just now the rain is starting to come in, uh, certainly west of town, they're starting to see some showers. I still think that for the next several hours, it's going to be a very slow ramp up. So. Um, yes, yeah, some light rain coming in. I think by mid to late afternoon, some of that rain will turn to sleet um, north of the pike and specifically in northern Worcester County. But don't expect any major wintry weather impacts uh, until really until after sunset, I think. So looking at the radar right now, if we could flip over to our weather graphics, we actually, in the Berkshires and really Route 2 Franklin County and into southern Vermont, New Hampshire, that Connecticut River Valley there, Radar is suggesting that we have some sleet and snow falling. Um, Let's it's, keep in mind that, oh, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. So the radar beam is actually, now this is a now product, but the radar is, is shooting several thousand feet up. So when you get out to, there's not a radar that's located in Northern Worcester County or in the Berkshires. So we're actually looking several thousand feet up. So it's entirely possible that um, that snow or that sleet is actually rain. It's it's probably very close. Yeah. Um, would, that's when we need some what we call ground truth and folks on the ground saying, you know, telling us exactly what it is. But And it's really going to be hard for places like Greenfield, like Bernardston and northern Franklin County as you cross over, go to, towards Keene or Dover, Brattleboro. It's going to be hard for it to accumulate initially yeah. just because it's battling the sun it's battling the warm days that we've had the last couple of days so that's why some of our totals have kind of been cut we can't just take mm -hmm. those snow maps that we see that sometimes are plastered on the internet we can't just take those as gospel yeah this is why a lot of folks i think actually could you bring up a temperature map just curious what the current yeah of course but but a lot of folks um you know in the common critiquing of weather forecasters they'll say oh you just take the models and put them on the air well if we did that Trust me, the forecast would look a lot different than it does now. And as you can see, temperature is currently in the low to mid 40s in most areas. 38 in orange, but still, it's yeah. going to struggle to accumulate there. Yeah. So um, at any rate, uh, the model data is uh, you have to take it for what it's worth, and then you have to sort of use some experience and think, OK, it's April 3rd. So on April 3rd, with a temperature between 38 and 44, it may the radar may say snow. It may even actually Ha there may be some wet flakes mixed in, but nothing consequential is really going to happen for the next several hours. So, got a comment on Facebook from uh, Shira. Forgive me if I spelled your name wrong, but um, she says it's raining. So, I'd be interested to hear where you live. And then Beth in Hopkinton says it's sleeting. There Interesting. In, in Hopkinton. So, the atmosphere is its so borderline for this event, and this is not uncommon for this time of year. Um, again, we said this yesterday, if you think of the atmosphere as a layer cake, so what we have during this storm is we have cold air way up high, you know, where the actual precipitation is coming out of the clouds, it's snow. And then as it comes down, there's a, a warm nose of air right around, uh, meteorologically speaking, around 750 millibars. This is probably between five and 10,000 feet up in the sky. There's an area, a, a layer of that layer cake that's above freezing. So the snow is falling down, is falling into that uh, layer that's relatively mild and melting into raindrops. And then on its, on its way down, it comes in contact with colder air again. In some areas and other areas, it's not cold enough. So in some places, you might get those sleep balls, where in other places, it might fall as liquid water. So I think we're going to see a wide variety of precipitation, really, all afternoon, all evening, and, and overnight. Yeah, exactly. This is, uh, to Terry's point, I'm pulling up the uh, the different layers. Let me see if I can find the right graphic here. Um, these are the layers, the, the layer the, cake. The layer cake, yeah. exactly. So right now, the area at the, at the surface, as you just saw, is actually fairly mild. So, But as the day goes on and as night comes on, it's going to cool to, say, between 33 and 36 degrees. So yeah. the, the, the snowflakes melt into rain, and then they fall through cold air, freeze into little pellets. And all night long, especially areas north of the pike, you're going to hear that ping, ping, ping off the cars, off the house, a lot of sleet. 
uh, in the initial hours of the storm as the, as the rain picks up again um, for this evening. So on the screen right now is our latest snowfall forecast. We reserve the right to tweak this as new information comes along. Uh, one discussion that we had live this time yesterday was, is it trending a little bit colder mm. where some of that sleep may transition over to some snow and perhaps we were debating live here, do we have to kind of nudge some of the totals up a little bit closer to maybe 495? And we ended up doing that yeah, uh, yeah. for the afternoon. I still think that, you know, just looking at some things live on air right now, I still think that Route 2 and North, and then as you go into New Hampshire, still going to be the jackpot zone for us. Absolutely. So any anywhere that's, in, that's elevated, um, I'm thinking of towns like Ashby, Ashburnham, parts of Fitchburg, West Fitchburg, any of those areas in Northern Worcester County or Northwestern uh, Middlesex County that have some elevation, 500 or 1,000 feet, that's where I wouldn't be shocked to see several inches of snow accumulate, very wet and pasty, lay, weighing down the limbs, and yeah. of course, uh, we'll probably talk about the winds in a little bit, but with wind gusts everywhere overnight, 30, 40, 50 miles an hour, I wouldn't be shocked to see several power outages in those higher elevated areas. Absolutely. Um, and cl I, I still say the biggest wild card with this storm is that one to three area uh, up in, say, northern Middlesex, northern Essex, from, say, Westford to Lowell to Lawrence, even very southern New Hampshire and Nashua. Um, because that area is gonna flip over to snow tonight, but how quickly does it flip? How much snow is able to accumulate, especially because a lot of it will be falling during the day tomorrow. So circled here in the program. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I wouldn't be shocked, um, Eric, Eric and I were talking about this last night. You know, that is our forecast, that's what we think will happen, but I wouldn't be shocked if somewhere in that one to three band, we end up getting four, five, or even six inches of snow. It just depends on, again, how quickly it changes over, how readily it accumulates. So we're getting some comments in on Facebook. As I mentioned off the top here, we are streaming on YouTube and on Facebook. Chime in, we love to hear what's happening in your neighborhood. You really help us out when it comes to the ground truth of things. Um, so Marjorie uh, asked about Buzzards Bay. Um, so we'll get to that in just a sec. Um, but uh, currently raining in Attleboro, um, raining in New Bedford, sleet in Holden, Mm. So we have some frozen precipitation really north of the pike, Hopkinton, as you go 495 towards Holden. And then, um, let's see here, uh, David, sounds like he's in Florida because he says it's 91 today in South Beach. Oh, County. thanks, David. Yeah. Yeah, a crucial piece of information <laughs> there in our forecasting. Uh, the Merrimack Valley, do we need to get the blower going again? As Terry just mentioned, mm. it's that's the question mark zone that we have, um, that it potentially could be a bust or boom area. Um, we're pretty confident. Yeah, I would say unlikely, um, right. but I, but I, I, this is classic weather forecaster speak. I wouldn't rule out in northernmost uh, Middlesex County, up near the New Hampshire border, I wouldn't rule out a few areas getting three inches or a little bit more. Um, but overall, up around that 495 belt up there, I feel like we're, we're probably talking a coating to an inch or two of slop and slush, not yeah. something you would snow blow per se. Right. Um, but it is coming towards the end of the storm. It's not like it's coming at the beginning and then going to get washed away by rain. So whatever we do get snow-wise, uh, we'll probably stick around for just a little bit. So uh, Joan says it's hailing and Sharon. It's sleet. Sleet. Um, how bad will the coastal flooding be on the New Hampshire seacoast? So, mm. one of the things that I've been covering quite a bit is, you know, sea level rise, our beach replenishment projects uh, from the seacoast, um, Hampton Beach, um, Portsmouth. It's a really big impact, right? Yeah. And um, Salisbury, they've taken a really big hit. I expect that to be a pretty big impact. Um, maybe not so much coastal flooding but just beach erosion, that yeah. persistent easterly, northeasterly wind likes to tear away at our beaches, and they are becoming like pretty fragile nowadays. It doesn't it's, take much. Yeah, it's been a terrible uh, winter up yeah. there on the coast of New Hampshire, coast of Maine, and even uh, down towards Salisbury. They've just been battered time after time again, and that's more so because we've had a lot of southeasters, so we've had a lot of storms that have come up and, and push the you know push the the water and the wind in, in a southeasterly direction. This is a nor'easter, so a little bit different. However, the timing of this one is such that during the morning high tide tomorrow, which is about 7:30 a.m. up that way, the winds will probably be peaking from Cape Ann through southern Maine. So 
Whereas overnight, I think the strongest winds are probably Cape Cod and along the immediate coastline, east coast. Tomorrow morning, I think the winds are peaking Cape Ann northward, and that's right during high tide. Right. Um, I do want to throw it out there to everyone tuning in, especially on Facebook. If you have the ability to horizontally film a video, send it into us, tag us on Twitter or Facebook or whatever it may be. We have a broadcast coming up in about 50 minutes um, on WBZ, and we'll try to share those in the evening too. We love hearing what's happening in your neighborhood, and we'll definitely try to use as many videos as possible. So tag us on Twitter. Uh, just you know, obviously provide that permission. Ashland Heavy Sleet hmm. in Ashland. So it's creeping closer to us. Interesting. And again, these are with surface temperatures um, in the upper 30s, low 40s. So that tells you that... That sleet layer, that warm nose, is a pretty thick layer. It's, the snow's coming down, it's melting, and then it's freezing over and falling as these little ice pellets. And it's probably going to be sleeting there. for If it's already happening, yeah. you're probably going to see sleet for almost the entire afternoon and evening. Now, sleet doesn't really accumulate like snow does, but if you get several hours of it, yeah. you, could, you could get an inch or two of just, you know, ice pellet accumulation. Fairly unusual, but certainly could happen. I'm wondering, Terry, as we look at this radar right now, is if... This is sort of bright banding a mm -hmm. little bit right along 495 if we're getting that sleet changing over. So sometimes when you get um, melting snowflakes, they give off this signature on radar that uh, looks makes it look like it's moderate to even heavy rain, but it's actually the melting snowflakes. It's the reflectivity, yeah. it's the reflectivity that the correlation uh, coefficient that might give us a better idea of where the sleet is coming in. Yeah, I mean, so those, certainly. That, those bright areas in West Boylston, Levenster, Barry, those are that sleet. Um, that's definitely sleep there. So it, it, what yeah. that's showing is just the different precipitation types so where you see the, the difference in color. Again, um, yeah, up there in Westboro, that's most likely sleet. Um, and again, sleet is not really a, a real hazardous precipitation type. It's ice, but it's ice balls. It's not like the freezing rain that it, that it hits the surface and freezes on contact. Thankfully, the, the temperatures at the very ground level of this storm are going to remain slightly above freezing, so yep. we shouldn't see much of that. All right, so let's step you through our future cast. Let me uh, pull that up, and we'll walk everyone through the timeline for things. I know we're probably getting... So, I, so it's funny, like this, I just came out of a morning news meeting, and we, you know, while the storm was sort of top of line, everybody's still talking more so about the eclipse here. I don't know out in the general public if that's... If that's the case, but we will have a little bit of an eclipse preview after we do yeah. this. Yeah. So here, here's our future cast model showing. I'm just going to kind of step us through that rain snow line. It's something we track in every winter storm. Sometimes it plays in our favor, where it's really definitive. That rain snow line is far to our south, and we know everyone's going to get mm -hmm. some snow, or it's far to our north. Everyone gets rain. This one comes into play, and it looks like. You know, we, we do switch over to maybe all sleet as opposed to wet snowflakes, too, yeah. at some point this afternoon. And then as the system really starts to wrap up and draw some cold air in overnight. Yeah, so here's where it gets interesting, right? So right. midnight and, and shortly thereafter, up in that, that place that you circled on the map. Yep. So northern Middlesex, northern Essex County, if we truly are snowing at 2 a.m., and this I know the model says it, but it may or may not be true. If it's truly snowing at 2 a.m., we get several hours of moderate to heavy snow up there, right. then during the nighttime hours, it could it could accumulate, you know, at a decent clip. Absolutely. That is the wild card zone. And, you know, it looks like it could potentially even be some heavy snow, too. Yeah. The you know, it's gonna one, be two inches hard. an hour exactly. sort of thing. Um, and then as the sun rises, we start to taper off a little bit. Still maybe some snowflakes in Boston, but we talked about it the last couple of days. It's hard for snow to accumulate in the month of April mm. in Boston for a couple of reasons. The sun angle, it's gonna be battling the sun angle. It's coming off some warm days. So all of that plays against us really getting any sort of accumulation. It's gonna, it may fall, it's just yeah. not gonna pile up. Not to mention in a nor'easter, hence the term, the winds are coming off the northeast, which is off the ocean in Boston. And so, you know, the ocean isn't real warm right now, obviously, but um, it's it's warm enough that it that it yeah. really if you have any sort of wind off the water in April like you, you're not going to be able to accumulate you know snowfall in the city absolutely so you can see that area like it's it's the model hangs on to snow for a good portion of the day tomorrow again mostly north of the pike and then eventually later in the afternoon up near uh, 495 Lawrence Lowell Haverhill so during the day probably won't accumulate much um, but if it keeps going all day long certainly. 
um, will be interesting to see, you know, that that zone, you know, how much snow they can they end up getting. Absolutely. Let me flip over to Facebook, see if we have any uh, questions. Um, let's see here. I'm scrolling back up. We're getting a lot of folks in. Really appreciate everyone tuning in, Facebook and YouTube. Um, all right, so Northboro, 43 degrees. That's from Adrian. Mm -hmm. Appreciate you, Adrian. Um, Jim says he's in Lawrence. Just made sure his snowblower started. Just in case. Not a bad idea. Just in case. You never know. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, I will say, Jim, uh, again, nothing is ever def definitive in the meter world of meteorology, but this should be the last time. I would say with a fair amount of confidence that after this storm passes, maybe you drain the snowblower for the year, take out the patio furniture. I'll, I'll probably regret saying that. <laughs> yeah, now when absolutely. I, but I think this should be the last, the last chance. Uh, so Sue um, asked about Waltham specifically mm -hmm. Waltham. It's really kind of on the border of like Metro West almost versus yeah. Metro Boston. Like, I think it's I think it's a you you probably won't see more than a coating on the grass here and there uh, tomorrow morning and it's I think Waltham's a little bit too close to the coast, a little bit too far south and east. You'll you'll hear some sleet at times, you'll probably see some wet flakes at times tomorrow morning, but I doubt there'll be much accumulation. I think you got to get 495 area and elevation to yeah. really get into the wintry stuff. So, I'm getting a lot of comments out Hopkinton getting Franklin uh, Northbridge some sleet a lot yeah. of sleet falling in those areas get um, used to it I think it's, yeah. it's gonna be in the story of the day and of the evening um, just a lot of a lot of pinging off the off the house and off the windshield but again it's not melting on contact the actual ter temperatures at ground level are above freezing so it's not like it's gonna cause a glaze on everything we're not concerned about that um, it's actually not, again, not a very hazardous precipitation type in the scope of things. Uh, a little bit of sleet mix in Mashpee now from Seaporium. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, yeah, I mean, if the precip comes yeah. down heavy enough yeah. and it doesn't have time to, to fully melt into the raindrops again, I guess probably what's happening. You get a little bit of a heavier burst and it pulls down that that icy, snow, icy little ball that's made several thousand feet up. Um, I mentioned Buzzards Bay a little earlier, and Terry mentioned it, but I, Marjorie, want to come back to answer your question. Buzzards Bay, um, she says we always lose power in these type of storms. Mm -hmm. um, so I do think that you'll get some really gusty winds yeah. overnight. I don't think that the precipitation, especially farther south, is going to be dangerous right. to those areas. Um, but certainly if you know the ground is soggy enough and you get those yeah. 40, 50 mile an hour winds right on Buzzards Bay, yeah, I mean, we could get a couple of trees that knock over some power lines. I don't see anything particularly special about this storm that really says, Buzzards Bay, you're definitely going to lose power. No, in fact, we haven't really focused much on that area other than to talk about the wind and another couple inches of water. I mean, if anything, I think the story south of the Pike and over southeastern Mass and Rhode Island is just more rain, more water. Yeah. Um, you know, a, a couple more inches of water. And I, if you've been driving around the neighborhood, I know uh, even up where I live, like, all the lakes and streams are just, they're swollen. So a couple more inches of liquid are, is not necessarily a good thing. And you know, the, the wind, 50, 60 mile an hour gusts right along the coasts, sure there could be some, some at, uh, scattered outages, but I think the main concern is still in that heavy snow area. Absolutely, yeah. So this is our rainfall forecast. You're talking uh, another one to three inches of liquid water on a ground that is already just sopped. Just yeah. sopped. Every time I drive through some of the backwoods in Worcester County, like. It seems like every other, you know, couple miles there's like a swamp, mm -hmm. like a ghost forest that has yep. has been. Same thing in Middlesex County. I, we, my wife and I went for a walk this weekend, and, it's like, and she said to me at one point, she's like, "I don't remember a lake being there." I'm like, "That's not. That's actually not a lake. That's just the runoff." It's the, so any of these low lying areas, the water runs off and it just sort of sits there, and yeah. it, we can't get rid of it because every three days we're getting another rainstorm. Yeah, exactly. Um, so that you know, as we get further into spring, I, again, we do think the pattern may relax a little bit after this. Um, but if we were to get a few more of these. I think we would have to start talking about some serious river flooding. All right, so I, I'm still going to be monitoring Facebook for any sort of questions that come in, but I do want to focus a little bit on the solar eclipse. Mm -hmm. um, just did a couple of interviews, one with ISO New England and also with NASA. We'll have some mm -hmm. of that cool sound. Stuff. Yeah. yeah, cool stuff. Can't wait to bring that to you on WBZ and on our streaming uh, network, CBS News Boston. This is the path of totality if you're just kind of getting plugged in, which we have people in the newsroom that are just Somebody, getting plugged in. I'm not going to mention any no, names. No names at all. A certain yeah. reporter just said, when is this happening again? Yeah. yeah. 
Oh. Do we need glasses? <laughs> should I? Yeah, should I ha get special glasses for this? Yeah, and yeah. we're not going to throw he or she <laughs> under the bus, but uh, this is the path of totality that said, literally says it there, path of totality. Um, it's really important. If you have the means, if you have the ability to go to totality, it is the experience that it's going to be no doubt broadcast and, and it's going to live up to that experience yeah it, you basically go from day to night in the course of a very short period of time and it's something that um you know many folks have described as life-changing it's just it's an experience unlike any other and like we've said before 98 percent is far from 100 percent. you really if you're that close it's worth the drive to get in the path of totality yep and of course everyone wants to know well are we going to be able to see it how's the weather look on monday yeah um, Let me see if we can. Um, uh, so I did a graphic for Eric last night. Uh, I don't know if you can pull it up. That basically shows like the forecast cloud cover. And sure. right now, uh, it looks like New England may be in between two systems. So the storm system that's coming in the next couple of days is going to be very slow to depart. But we think it will move out in time. The question in my mind is up in the upper Great Lakes in the Midwest. There's going to be a cutoff low up there, and so some of those clouds, there it is right there, some of those clouds may spill over into New England, starting to make me a little nervous about Monday. So here's what I will say, and and I watched um, our partners at the Weather Channel, CBS News and the Weather Channel, they have a partnership. Stephanie Abrams mentioned in 2017, four days ahead, she was in the path of totality, mm -hmm. and it was forecast to be cloudy. But just so happened those five minutes or right, whatever it right. was the skies broke and she was able to see the eclipse put yourself in that opportunity even if it's showing as mm -hmm. I, I don't see anything glaring like precipitation wise right. that would really right. wreck the forecast you know if you can go to northern new england burlington as you go into northern uh new hampshire and into really the crown of maine um, if you can put yourself in that spot, yeah. it'll still be worth it, I think. I think you're right. Um, I just, just this gives us a little bit of pause because, you know, up until yesterday, it didn't, this system in the Midwest wasn't yeah. going to be that close. But if, if I were to, as of right now, and again, it's still several days away, I would favor Maine over Vermont given yes. this particular forecast. But stay tuned. If, you, if you're planning on being mobile that day, I would definitely stay tuned. Check us out over the weekend. Get, get an updated forecast. I wouldn't necessarily want to be going to Texas right now. I don't know if you know anybody that's doing that. Yeah, um, about that. <laughs> the forecast doesn't look great down there. But again, day of, you really never know. I mean, things could change. Down that way, severe weather blows through early, and maybe you get a, a nice clearing. And that's what we're hoping for. So Eric and myself separately traveling to Texas, and then we have Alyssa Andrews, uh, another meteorologist here. She's going to be traveling to Indianapolis. We're all crossing our fingers for a nice day. Yeah, and you're going to be mobile, right? You get to get yeah, that. so I've already prepped my family saying, all right, we're going to Dallas, but we may not end up in we Dallas. We may end up in Missouri. So. Yeah, I mean, it's a six-hour <laughs> trip. What's another six hours? But to that point, this is an experience that you're going to be able to do with your family. They're going to remember it. My kids are going to remember it. I may not be around for the next one in New England. 2079. 20, 2079, 55 years from now. I want them to be able to pass that on. And yeah. who knows? We're going to be in the path of totality. Will we actually see it? I'm not sure. But cross our fingers. I hope so. Thank hope you. So. <laughs> and we'll have updates uh, you know, all the next several days on the eclipse here. Uh, we want to really just, our focus really is on the storm right now, getting getting through the next, say, 24 hours, and then um, all our eyes will turn to forecast for next Monday. Absolutely. So I don't see, uh, there's a lot of like how many inches in this town versus that town. I'll put up the put up the map one, once again, and you'll have to kind of pick out your towns. Yeah, I think, again, the thing to stress is that uh, the more elevation you have and the farther north and west you live from Boston, Austin, the better chance of snow accumulation. So northern Worcester, again, northern Worcester County, if you're above 500 feet, certainly up near 1,000 feet, you're at most risk for three, four, five, six inches of very heavy, wet, pasty snow. A little bit lower elevation into western Middlesex County, think about like Pepperell Towns in Westford, you know, should be a lower, should be lower amounts. Uh, again, those are the areas that we're most concerned with some sort of forecast change though. And then closer to Boston, 128, you know, some scattered coatings. Now, the 6 to 12 up in near Monadnock region, southwestern Cheshire County, that's a lot of wet. That's a lot of heavy stuff. That's heavy stuff, stuff yeah. yeah. This is good news for ski resorts, so. Sure. I mean, they've had a rough, rough winter, to say the least. They're making up for it They're They're trying in, in March to. and April. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, so, guys, we're going um, to go now. I'm just uh, checking in here. Um, once again, want to uh, ask for you to... Chime in and send us your videos, uh, pictures, videos. We'll take it. Um, just tag us on Twitter, something like that, and we'll 
Uh, try to share those at noontime. Jason Michael will have the forecast on WBZ. Eric will have the forecast this evening on WBZ. And we're going to be streaming all afternoon on CBS News Boston. Um, so with that, we're going to try to do these more often, Terry. I enjoy it. It's like yeah. a little little coffee talk with... We just need a snazzy name and we're yeah. going to go. <laughs> That's the other thing. Tag is, what, do you, what should we call this? Jacob and Terry. Something creative. I, yeah. I don't know. Um, Let's see. Uh, the Omega Block. We're hanging on the Omega Block. I don't know. <laughs> Too nerdy. Yeah. Uh, anyway, really appreciate everyone tuning in right now. Uh, we will have much more this afternoon on the storm as it evolves. For now, guys, have a good one. Stay safe.